International filmmakers have chosen Art Rock as a filming location for decades, sometimes as a stand-in for a fictional place or to simply showcase our beautiful island on the big screen. Some you may know, others you probably have no idea exist. Here is a look at some of the international films that were shot right here in our beautiful Barbados. First up is Island in the Sun, directed by Robert Ronson. It stars James Mason, Harry Belafonte, Dorothy Dandridge, Joan Fontaine, and Joan Collins. Released in 1957, it's set on the fictional island of Santa Marta, a stand-in for the British colonized West Indies. According to the film's producer, Daryl F. Zanuck, 90% of it was shot in Barbados and Grenada. The film deals with race relations, interracial romances, and the social inequality between the British colonizers and the native population. The title song, Island in the Sun, was written by Harry Belafonte and Irving Bergy. Yes, the same Irving Bergy that wrote our national anthem. The song has been covered over 40 times, including by local Calypso band, The Merry Men. The film was shot at the Farley Hill Mansion in 1956, in nine years before it was destroyed by a fire, making this one of the best sources to see it in all its glory. By the time that the film was shot there, the mansion was no longer occupied, so the producers had to refurnish it. It was also shot at Heron Bay in St. James, also known as Colony Club Beach because of the hotel and Foster Hall in St. Joseph. Next on the list is the 1973 blaxploitation film, Black Snake, directed by Russ Meyer and shot here in 1972. It was purportedly the first feature length film shot entirely in Barbados and featured local actors in prominent roles. Set on the fictional island of San Cristobal in 1835, the film tells the story of a slave revolt at Blackmore Plantation run by the vicious and sadistic Lady Susan Walker, whose brother-in-law Charles has come to the island in search of his missing brother, Jonathan, who, fun fact, was played by David Prowse, the man under the mask of Darth Vader in the Star Wars original trilogy. In his autobiography, Straight from the Force's Mouth, Prowse recounts the six weeks he spent on island shooting the film. He calls the shoot itself a trial, but says that he really felt at home on the island. For the rest of the crew, it was a different story. Yes, it was bloody hot and sometimes you have to go all day without a swim in the sea or allegedly quench in the hotel pool while getting plastered on rum punch and most of the crew decided that such hardship really was too much for film folk to tolerate. In his book, Russ Meyer, The Life in Films, David K. Frazier cites several articles from a Barbados advocate about the film. They revealed that Barbados was chosen for filming because of St. Nicholas Abbey. Some filming took place at the private residence Abbotsford in Belleville. The film's world premiere was in Barbados at Rudolph's Drive-In at the Empire Theatre on March 14, 1973, and in its first week, it earned more money than any film ever shown in Barbados. One article said that then Minister of Tourism, Information and Public Relations Peter Morgan called the film's violence nauseating and that he withdrew his support for the film. In a later letter to the editor, Morgan's reaction was criticized. The writer argued that the film should be praised for accurately depicting the island's historical past. In any case, Barbados is pretty much the only place where the film was successful. Even Meyer himself called it a failure. A few months after Black Snake's release, Blake Edwards' The Tamarin Seed was also filmed here, in mid-June 1973. Based on a novel by Evelyn Anthony, the British-American romantic thriller stars Julie Andrews and Omar Sharif as a British silver servant and Russian KGB agent respectively, who meet and fall in love while vacationing in Barbados. Some of the locations used in the film are the Barbados Museum, East Coast Road, Bathsheba, and Sandy Lane. Based on information from some very helpful members of Barbados Photographic Society's Facebook group, it may have also been filmed at Folkestone Beach in St. James and near the old Barbados Beach Village. We weren't able to identify all of the locations, unfortunately, but take a look and let us know if you recognize any of them. Tamarind Seed is available for free on YouTube, so check it out if you want a cinematic look at 1970s Barbados. Finally, we have the 1989 BBC TV movie, Miss Marple, 
A Caribbean Mystery, adapted from the novel by Agatha Christie. The titular amateur detective is sent to Barbados for a vacation and finds herself bored until a series of murders take place at the hotel where she's staying. The novel was inspired by Christie's 1956 trip to the island, the same year that Coral Reef Club, where she stayed, was opened. Karen Capaldi, daughter of Budge and Cynthia O'Hara, the original owners of Coral Reef, and one of the current directors, recalled, When I joined our family business in the 1980s, the BBC was researching for the producers where to film a Caribbean mystery and had no idea of the history and of course were very excited when I told them and subsequently it was filmed here and at Ealing Studios for the interiors. She added that per her mother Cynthia O'Hara's recollection, Harry Belafonte and Joan Collins stayed at the hotel while filming Island of the Sun as did Omar Sharif and Julie Andrews during the filming of the Tamarind Seed, which was shot at Coral Reef Club as well. When international filmmakers are in need of a beautiful location that's warm and sunny with gorgeous sandy beaches, they often turn to the Caribbean and it's a treat seeing Barbados. While this isn't a complete list of all the overseas productions that were filmed here, there's a pretty lengthy one over on IMDb. I hope this list demonstrates the different kinds of films that were made on this rock. 